They were all slightly annoyed due to Anthony and Ian's takeover on the main channel. I mean, it was definitely a big change, right? We were celebrating and we were just like, oh my God, this is great news. And I think there was definitely an undertone of like, well, one third what does of this the mean? Is good. Right. Since coming back into Smosh, I know a bunch of you have some assumptions about Smosh and the Smosh cast. And this is just the first round of Smosh cast. There's gonna be more to come, y'all. Agure Dragon says, Chance is the type of person to talk through a movie. Arasha is the type to ask questions about what's going on that will be answered in moments. Courtney is the type to get severely invested. Yeah. Yeah. Is this true? <laughs> I think, I mean, that's I think that's accurate. a little bit accurate. For you me. ask questions during the movie? Okay, it's a discussion. It no. should be. <laughs> <laughs> it's an open forum. Obviously, within the scope of like, if it's like a couple of friends just watching movies, I feel like I would definitely be like, now who's that? No, <laughs> that drives me crazy, Arasha. And why did he do that? Why would he? But it's like you have all the same information I have. We're watching the same movie, but, Rasha. But we could predict. <laughs> we could uh, we could challenge each other. Okay. And how fun if he does what I think he was going to do. Mm. So fun. Mm. Movie night at my place. Okay. <laughs> you know what? And I will be sick that night. Okay. <laughs> but you say, what are you, you they, they said you talk, talk to her. I do talk. I react. I react loudly. Okay. Uh, that's fun. Yeah. Because it's like you went to the movie theater with people for a reason, or you're watching a movie with people for a reason. Actually, I do it by myself, too. <laughs> Just to yourself, I am yeah. I 100% do it by myself. I'm like, don't, bitch, you knew what you were getting into. <laughs> And he told you the first time. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely the type to undivided attention. I'm locked in to the point where if I'm watching movies with friends, if you're saying something to me, I likely didn't hear it. I'm curious how on they have to feel in videos and how they cope when dealing with personal issues that come up between them. For me, I feel like it's, it, I try to be a little honest with how I'm showing up for the day. And it's usually with, being present about whatever we're doing. So if I like the game that we're playing, you will see that. Mm -hmm. Like I think I'm good. if I'm having fun, like you will see that I yeah. am getting excited. And I think that's with any shoot, like obviously with acting, with performing, it is what I enjoy, it's what we enjoy. But if it's not something that I have my full heart in or something that I'm just like, oh, this feels awkward mm -hmm. or difficult or challenging in any way, I think it's a little obvious to see that on mm. screen for me. I think you'll be like, what's going on? I think there? me too, but then it's not, uh, I will never show that I'm having like a personal conflict with someone on camera. Oh yeah. Oh no, absolutely not. No, I'll hide that shit deep. Yeah. You'll yeah. never know. <laughs> you'll never know. Cause then it can be dissected in so many different ways. Yeah. And oh, it's like, yeah. you don't know the story. And it's story. funny too, cause fans will try to like create some crazy exactly. narratives. Right. I'm like, where the hell did you get that? <laughs> Who told you that? Because yeah. you are so far off the mark. I mean, and they, they are able to point out like small looks and glances yeah. that we give each other in positive yeah. ways of like, oh, I love the way that like yeah. Arash just glanced really quickly at Courtney. So then it's obviously like we're also accepting the other end of like, wait, did anybody see that eye roll? Like, was that towards yeah, Courtney? Wow. And it's like, no, that wasn't that. Yeah, but I mean, we kind of take, again, the balance, both of those tossed up true. in the comments. I also think it's harder sometimes to detect when we are having our off days in general because like I can I feel like you always come with like a, you feel like you both come with such a professional like good energy like you guys are always ready to go um, and I love that about both of you. All of the Smosh cast are friends outside of work. I'd say right now like I feel like that's true. Um, it's obviously a job first but uh, I consider each of you, my friends, because I feel like I have great rapport with everybody. Like, I can go to Arasha if I'm having just like a shitty hormonal day, or like I go to you when I'm feeling a little icky sometimes. I think the important thing is, is like, you know, a uh, friend is, it can be tossed around mm -hmm. a lot as a term. Yeah. Um, but I would say a friend is somebody that, you know, somebody that you're checking in with, somebody that you're, you know, uh, keeping good uh, acquaintances with. I think I compartmentalize my friendships. Mm. Not that I'm not friends with them outside of work, but I have other friends outside of work that I'm trying to also split my time between. And so it's not that I'm not friends with the Smoshcast outside of work, I am, but I'm also doing, I have other 
people to see and other people to care to and right. nurture to. Totally, it's like, it's like work friends. It is work friends yeah. and it's work, we are in a weird place where our work is so based off of friendship. I assumed that they all originally wanted to be traditional actors and didn't envision themselves as YouTube stars. <sighs> I still view myself as a traditional actor. I'm still acting and doing comedy and I'm trained fully and have all the skill sets and utensils. Utensils? <laughs> utensils. Yes. Utensils. Yes. Pork and knife, bitch. <laughs> bon appetit. Uh, but it's so funny because I think I get that a lot where like on videos it'll be comments and it'll be like, oh, wow, you really did that dance. Or like, oh, wow, you can sing. Or you really acted. I'm like, yeah, bitch. I would hope so. I would hope so. I like right. trained for years. Totally. The comments and, and also just like, I think friends as well, like people who just know that I moved to LA and am doing acting. Like a lot of people have been like, oh, so you're in the YouTube world now. Mm -hmm. and it's like, no, 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 mm -hmm. also. Like also. this is just another branch of it. Or what I always say too, is that it's it's amazing for exposure. It's yeah. just like putting ourselves out there and it's, it's in odd. In practice. In practice, totally. Like even just like getting like mic'd all the time, like getting like your frame on camera. How to like, be on Completely. Set. Yeah. Like all of that I think is just a leg up for us. It's just a, that extra experience. And in a lot of ways too, like somehow like our YouTube uh, channel, our videos, they end up getting a lot more viewership, a lot more audience and, and people cling to us I think as personalities because we are people rather yeah. than like the actors that you'll see on screen mm -hmm. who might quickly appear. That's so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I started as a Viner and I never had a manager or like an agent or anything. I never did. I never pursued the acting career. Um, but when I started at Smosh and people started calling me a YouTuber, I thought it was super weird mm. and I didn't understand it. I always loved YouTube and like I kind of always wanted to be a YouTuber but didn't understand that that's what I was doing when I first got brought on because I was kind of just brought on as an actor mm -hmm. and eventually started doing some personality content on Smosh's second channel. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't think I fit in that that Wait. assumption at all. Arasha and Chance are tired of being considered new and all of the old Smosh videos being brought up or referenced can be confusing or overwhelming. I love being new. Right. I've got nothing, no problems with it. Yeah. I'm just hearing young. I, I hear youthful. <laughs> I hear free spirited. Fresh. <laughs> ripe. Ew. No, I like ripe. Okay, I like ripe. Good, good, We're good. ripe. Yeah, I'd agree. I think I also like it. It's it's uh, it's highlighting us. I think in yeah. a different way. The only time I have a problem with it is when everyone's like, "How could you not know?" Well, bitch, there's. Thousands of hours of content that yeah. I, there is no possible way I could ever catch up so on much. and yeah. still live my life. Yeah. I, I'd say it's harder than the Marvel Universe to like try and even way chip away. It's like this one segment from this one video that was eight years ago. And then the bit just like ran and ran and ran and, and, and we it, have no idea where it went. In this era, new is good to our audiences because like way back when, if someone new came up, people did not like it. Like really? it took years. Yeah. It took years for like the Smosh Squad to stop getting like, who are these people? Uh, like these are like, where's Ian and Anthony? Like it took years to finally get like people to actually accept and be excited about content with just us in it. Why do you think that was? You know, I think that was an era where people didn't like change and they were just used to two dudes all the time. Like just these two guys who are best friends. Like they're best friends. Like who are these new people? They're not our best friends. Mm -hmm. Right, so, right. You, know. you get so used to like seeing your favorite people and then it's like, I don't want You're this, not this person to take over yeah. more time with them. So it makes sense, but definitely new is usually scary, but I would say we've been welcomed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. They were all slightly annoyed by their cutback of filming content due to Anthony and Ian's takeover on the main channel. I mean, it was definitely a big change, right? Definitely. It was a big change. Annoyed is not the right word. Yeah, I think, I mean, when we like found out, definitely it was like we were celebrating and we were just like, oh my God, this is great news. And I think there was definitely an undertone of like, well, one third what does of this the mean? channel is gone. Right, <laughs> right. Like, what's going to change for cast. And yeah. I remember definitely being like, you know, celebrating the bigger picture because it's a beautiful story and being like, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But also being like, hold on, before I fully just be like, yay, this is amazing. I need to also know more about what this is going to entail. 
And, you know, I would say up in at this present moment, uh, definitely annoyed is not the right word. Having seen what's happening with the sketches and them just being able to open those doors to the rest of the cast and that kind of being at a very gradual process, I think was honestly kind of smart. Just like reunion shows are doing their thing, I think it's like nostalgia first yeah. and just like fully injecting that into people. And I and I think that that's what they were going for. And then it was like slowly bringing in these cast members who aren't new per se, but maybe new to the audiences that they brought back. And like you said, new can be difficult. So I think they kind of had that in mind and now are like slowly introducing, giving bigger parts to cast members. Um, and, and I think that is uh, smarter for sure. Yeah, I remember we were celebrating and they're like, yeah, so now the sketch is going to be just Ian and Anthony. I was like, oh, OK, yeah, duh, should have thought about that. Yeah. But um, and, and like we were having a lot of fun on the main channel for sure. Like we we're trying. We were having a lot of fun. We, were we had a lot of ideas. Of, of different stuff. We definitely had some awkward stages where we were trying yeah. things. We were throwing stuff at the wall and a lot of stuff kind of wasn't sticking. Yeah. Or like. We'd have a small audience of people who were obsessed with something right. and then some stuff that was kind of hitting. Like, yeah. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, all those are gone, but it's not like they're gone forever. And like, that's something that they told me, at least in the early on. And like, like you said, they're already kind of bringing cast in. And I have a feeling it's going to be more and more like the cast going to be part of the main channel. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I've always wondered if when Defy took over and Anthony left, if any of the Smosh cast felt a loss of identity regarding the channel, being more aimed towards kids and putting on a PG presence and PG characters. Yeah, so Defy was an interesting time because it was like 30 suits trying to control what was happening. And I think like they must have read some article that said, teens are where the money's at and so like i would say even before anthony left they were trying really hard to market to super super young viewers and they probably went even harder in it when anthony left because they're like well anthony left maybe we got to like try and bring in some new audiences and so like yeah i remember like there were attempts at marketing that felt like so juvenile to the point where like they're like yeah this summer guys who cares take off your shoes no play in the in the hose <laughs> And it was just so confusing because they wanted all these young viewers to come watch Smosh. But then if you look at Smosh, that content's not for kids. It's for kids in that like South Park's for kids in that I secretly snuck my parents' little tiny TV into my room at night to watch those shows that were clearly inappropriate for me. Right. Um, and like back then, we didn't have any type of creative input like at all. I, I it, Like it, I, I think on Smosh Pit, which was technically smosh second channel for a while uh that was the only place where we ever got to like pitch like ideas we got to like write sketches and stuff for main channel but in terms of like big picture decisions absolutely not in our control so like that kind of sense of identity kind of was just a cloud floating over us like a lot i would say chance is secretly straight <gasps> oh How straight know. chance oh no they saw love I'm is very blind much you know what? But I think I'm not all the way gay. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a spectrum. It is a spectrum. What, so where are you at? Girl, I don't know. <laughs> so what's your enough, percentage? Enough that I'm going to say, girl, I don't know that it's a percentage 90, thing. 10? I think it's a person thing, and that's so annoying yeah. to say. But it's oh, true. That. Yeah. It is case by case. I would date a woman again. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's magic. I'm learning so much. Wow. Courtney is gay, homosexual gay. <laughs> I could have been gay. I almost submitted this one. That's so funny. I am queer, and I, it's funny because like I do get comments sometimes. People like are like wondering what my sexuality is because they probably just haven't seen like anything about me coming out. But I am pan by whatever, and then like demi with men, uh, but women I'm instantly attracted to. Cause they, Cause they, they just got me. They just be walking around. They, got down the tongue -tongue. they really be walking around like that. My new chance was straight. <laughs> <laughs> I have always assumed that the Smosh cast had to fight for attention as kids, and that continued into their personalities through adulthood. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, I will be the I will be the first to say that that is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said this on uh, Smosh Mouth, but like I was a really bad kid. 
Like I was constantly. Really? I thought you guys knew this. I feel like I told you. Say oh, more. This is、um, so interesting. Yeah, I mean, I was like, I was definitely like better in high school, but in like elementary school and middle school, like I was constantly like. Taken、oh. to the principal's office. What?、Um, yeah, yeah. I really thought you guys knew no. this.、Uh, Don't know if you really dived into well, this. Well, I never did anything like like awful or like rude. Never anything like that. But I was very distracting.、Uh. I was constantly、uh, vying for attention. Like I was like, oh, joke time. Oh, <laughs> this is my time to shine. Or like, oh, I have to point this out. I got to make this bit. I got to do. So you're a class clown. A little bit of class clown. Wow. And obviously, teachers are like, shut up <laughs> and literally go away.、Um, so I, I did that all throughout growing up.、Um, and once I fully was like, I'm going to be a performer. I was like. I, I think childhood me would definitely need some of that too. Yeah, as yeah. as number five of seven kids, it was definitely difficult to get the attention that one would normally want. And、um, I, as soon as I figured out like a camera, it's like, oh, I can have unlimited attention、mm. if I、oh, film、yeah. myself、yep. <laughs> uh, and did all kind of silly stuff. But yeah, that com- competition for attention, competition for food,、mm. all kinds of. <laughs> I definitely was competing for attention. I definitely was competing for attention. But where, <laughs> but where was I competing? I was su- I was really good student. Okay. But I was also different than everyone that was going to school with me. So I already had the attention on me. Okay.、And、so I think I had to learn ways to channel that attention so that it wasn't、uh, malignant intent or like、yeah. that it wasn't negative intention. So I think that's why I tried to figure out how to be funny because. If you're getting them laughing with you, they're not laughing at you. Beluga Bean says, "I assume that in early Smosh days, Courtney was pushed to play more of an objectified feminine role." It's an accurate op- assumption, I would say,、um, and I feel seen by that. But like, Smosh has had so many different eras, and I'd say that in the beginning, when I first started, and it was purely as an actress, it was like. The roles were very simple. Like my names in the scripts were hot girl, or like I definitely played a bikini girl at one point or another. And I think I was so new to the space that you don't. I didn't really like understand that what was like going on. And then I think it got to the point where in other videos, when you're just doing like normal tasks, and then suddenly like that task is on the thumbnail with like really. Sexual text of like,、mm. what, God, it, they would they would get so wacky with it. Where like I thought I was playing an innocent game with people, and they would call it wet and wild with Courtney and Olivia. Oh wait,、um, yeah, yeah. I think it was just like that's what YouTube wanted, and、mm. that's what definitely the people working at Defy were looking for at the time. And like it started to affect my workday, where like、uh, people would just treat me like that in passing. And so it just it it did get to a weird point. I think the worst that it got, and when I like finally put my foot down, because this this kind of stuff would happen all the time, where I'm literally like laughing in it, like during a card game video, and they decided to go back close up on my face and replay my laughing, and then put like a very graphic sexual act happening to me. From a coworker, like fan edits would do this. Like no, this was our team. Our, like that like, was the thumbnail for the video. No, it was in the edit. So like when you're watching it, like that,、oh. they, it was like part of. It was like a little cut in bit, and like,、oh. and so I really freaked out. So like I, I did call the producer, and like that was my first time, like blowing up, and I. I was really upset because I was like, "Why are we censoring cuss words and and doing all these things and、right. having bikini girls? Like, where is the consistency in censorship? And are we are we making videos for little teens? Because because the, these sexual acts you're saying are very graphic and、right. not okay and not like a conventional thing. And、right. like, I put my foot down and I said, from that point on, if you ever want to make a sexual joke about me on camera or in a video ever again, I need to approve it." A lot of that stuff would just happen, and I like didn't. I, I mean, I wouldn't like talk about it that much, or like didn't understand, couldn't put into words like what was happening to me. And certainly, Ian and Anthony didn't know about a lot of that stuff that went on. Like, Ian and Anthony didn't know that the women of the cast were being kind of pressured into wearing outfits that they weren't comfortable wearing for a video because 
of whatever reason, because it's like Ian and Anthony weren't around or like, again, I didn't understand what was happening to me and I didn't talk to them about that kind of stuff. It just kind of like was what was happening to women, especially when this whole team was used to just like dudes, like making comedy together and having women regularly around and having a say was super new and foreign for a while. But the place that we're in now, I feel like so empowered and I feel like like we don't even touch that kind of content anymore. Like there was a point after that era, especially when we went back to Mythical, where like it was like they were terrified to do anything sexual. And I was like, come on, let me be like a little sexy. Yeah. Like, come on, you want you need a hot girl for this scene. Clearly you're trying to allude to a hot girl at a convention booth. Like I, I want to do that. Like yeah. people, it's so weird how wanting to be in control of a woman being sexualized rather than letting a woman have the control or the agency to like, I want to be sexy. Like when when doing Bikini Girl for the funeral, people were in the comments being like upset about like, wow, is this all you have to offer? Or like, like why are you doing this? And it's like, because I can and because I want to, just because I chose to do it doesn't make it any less meaningful than when two guys write it into a sketch. Right. Totally. Like, did you not also see that Bikini Girl's also director? Like, <laughs> right. that's a choice. Yeah. I love Arasha and Chance, but I know that being a new cast member can garner some negative comments. How has that experience been for them and how have they dealt with it? I'm curious about this too. But I have my, I guess I want to commandeer that question okay. and be like, what was your guys' first initial reactions to like the social media climate of Smosh? Very passionate and very um, uh, involved mm -hmm. and active. Um, it's not like a community that I've seen before. Um, and honestly, everyone was like very much on board from the get go. They're like, who is that? Who is that? What right. Are you what is that? I was, gonna, I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah, like personally, I think I was overwhelmed with just feeling, again, welcomed is the best word. Like I felt so loved and that was definitely new for me, you know? And I was like, just in terms of like, uh, again, exposure and just kind of seeing like comments and like new posts mm -hmm. and like fan edits and stuff like that. Like all of that is certainly um, what felt new. The negativity it, it was also, I think, something that, uh, you know, you learn to settle in. At first, it was, like, very jarring, and it was almost like something that I felt like I needed to uh, be aware of. Mm. I, I feel like I sought out all of my negativity. Mm. I was just, like, yeah. as there were a 100 positive comments, but the one negative one about your hair, right? And then yeah. you're like, oh, shoot, like, what, what is it with my hair? Like, what is this person upset about? And you just obsess over that. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to just be like, actually, I don't think that anybody truly cares. And the way that I am looking at it, nobody else is. Um, and that's something that I had to, to get through mm -hmm. with uh, in terms of hate overall. Sweet Mother says, I assume that Chance never experiences self-doubt. He seems so confident and sure of who he is. Sweet mother. Sweet Thank you. Oh, <laughs> sweet mother. Um, I uh, honestly, I really don't self doubt a lot. I really don't. There's no space for it, and it's not useful most of the time. I'm super critical, but not dowdy and not a lot of regret. Did something happen? I'm sorry, you don't have to answer this, but did something happen that made you make that conscious effort? Did, or were you always this way? Or. I think there's no inciting incident that I can recall off the top of my head, but um, I think I've always been this way. Um, I love that. Probably my Capricorn moon. <laughs> <laughs> Money making moves. <laughs> I love that, and it comes across like you seem sure of yourself. Yeah. And I don't think it comes across like cocky or no. or like overcompensating either. Mm -hmm. Like it's just you're you're it is a, what it you're is. a force that is moving forward. And I love it. I assume Chance still doesn't know who Anthony is. <laughs> who? <laughs> no, I know who Anthony is. We've been in a bunch of videos together, and we've had a couple parties. And yeah. Things like that. He just feels like another cast member now. Yeah. Right? Now he's new. Now he's new. Mm -hmm. It's so funny him going through the gambit of games and shows. And he's like, how does this work? And I'm like, oh, oh you let me don't show know how you. this works? That's Kim Ray. Oh, that was <laughs> me. <laughs> it has been fun. And he's not even through all the show formats yet. Yeah, that's he's right. He's still got a couple more. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. 
I can't wait to play Secret Sith with him. It always feels like Arasha is both thinking so much and not at all at the same time during videos. Okay. <laughs> like there is a surface of head empty no think that covers up the 567 internal monologues. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, um, thank you. Thank uh, you, Dilemma Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely not empty. I would say I I am somebody that overthinks like crazy. Um, I, I would also say not self doubt, um, but more just like I'm taking in a lot at at once, mm -hmm. and I am constantly like I sometimes feel like the person who is watching everybody on a screen and able to see everything that's going on and draw those own observations. The truth of it is that at Smosh there are different personalities and. There are a lot of people, I think, that are very, uh, very, like, front and center, like, you're out there and you're speaking, like, more like, there is, there are people at Smosh who would never get this assumption. Mm -hmm. People would, people would definitely not say this about a lot of people. Um, and I think it's because of the differing personalities. Some people are, I'm going to be loud, I'm going to be, uh, you know, engaging, I'm going to be energetic. And... My vibe is not that when that is already in the room. Mm -hmm. If somebody else is the loud one, if somebody else is the class clown, I'm not competing. Right. Um, and I think that is some, something that not a lot of people know about me. I really tend to shut down a little bit. If somebody else in front of me is a little too overwhelming, I am like, okay, you go and I sit back. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I think in, in Smosh videos, if people are taking more of the center stage, I, I do tend to just sit back for a second and just let the chill parts of my personality um, vibe with the video. But then new toss up of different cast members and maybe other people are wanting to take the back seat. And then I am like, awesome. Mm -hmm. I get to be in the front now and, and do my thing. So mm -hmm. definitely have a lot of thoughts in my head, <laughs> not empty minded at all, um, but certainly not because I'm upset or uh, distant just because of the personalities in the room. I assume Courtney may want to direct slash produce content outside of Smosh one day. Ooh. Oh, oh, I like that. Uh, that's fun. I talked a little bit about this on our podcast, but my hope this year of 2024 is to direct a music video. Because I love music so much and directing music videos feels like a perfect platter of everything I love about creating because music is so amazing and filming is so amazing and just like being able to make this gorgeous story and like what does, music makes you feel things and, and like movies and, and just visuals can make you feel things. It's just like this like crock pot of like feelings and vibes that I like. That is so you. Yeah. That is so you, I think. That's what I wish I could be. Like, I, the reason I struggle getting dressed in the morning because I wish I could just be a crock pot of emotions and feelings that just makes you feel good mm. and yeah. a little bit horny. Oh, <laughs> tea. Courtney does a lot more behind the scenes stuff than people probably would think. True. Yeah. That's true, yeah. I mean, people know I direct, but like, I just yeah. be around. Um, what's fun about a lot of the, the Smosh uh, funeral stuff that we put out for, for, for a funeral show was like a lot of those edits that we put on socials, I edited. I was an editor first. So like, there is a lot right. of things that I loved doing. You were an editor first? The first thing I ever did was edit <gasps> when I was like, 11, and I was editing, and I would only film stuff oh, I you meant to that's edit. Small. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's Spencer and Tommy, though. And so, like, I, I loved doing all the things behind the camera, and so I've always had an interest for it. And then when when the, when Anthony came back and main channel wasn't a thing anymore, I didn't direct main channel videos. I helped do with, like, a lot of Reddit stories and, like, other videos, because um, it's just, just fun. And yeah. you guys are so fun to work with. Courtney falls in love easily. Oh, Ooh. that's so true. It actually is true. Oh. Um, not like romantically, Eat. like that takes time, but I fall in love with like people and like just like their personality and their existence super easily. Um, and I've had to control that and dial it back because like I used to think everybody wanted to be friends and that's not true. Like I'm not for everyone. And so like now I try and take my time and it's like, there's no time wasted because we're all still getting to like spend time around each other. But yeah, but yeah I, I, I have to be careful because of it for sure. Chance is shy in public, but outgoing at parties. I'm so quiet in public. I'm so stone-faced in you public. Are. 
And I'm like, get to the place, do the thing that you need to do huh. to complete the transaction. But then at parties, yeah, I'm... You're so talented at parties. I'm very talented at parties. <laughs> That's like, true. Because you're like, okay, who should I go flirt with? Okay, let's go. And you just go. And I'm like, oh, 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 I can't do that. Oh, oh, he's doing it. He's oh, doing it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's practice. It's practice. It's skilled. And yeah. it's well done. Arasha had strict parents growing up, so that's why she lies really well now. Yeah, my parents uh, were definitely not like, you know, uh, super loose, mm -hmm. I guess, with the rules. Um, but I did not lie because of that. I think mm. that is where the... Disconnect. That's where the disconnect is in that assumption. My entire family immigrated from India when I was like one and my brother was like three. So as I and my brother were being raised, like my parents were also mm. being raised. Like it was mm. obviously their first time. While we started off being a little bit more traditional and culturally strict, it has definitely loosened up over the years. Courtney resents having such a large following because of the, as Tommy says, freaks of Reddit. Yeah, I used to be a little bit vocal about um, the Reddit. Because remember I mentioned I wish I hadn't found about, out about Reddit because mm -hmm. like someone we used to work at back at Defy was like, did you know that you have a, a Reddit page where they keep updated on everything you're doing? And I was like, what? That's so cool. I didn't know that. And then I went to it. And then it was like Courtney Miller slow mo jiggle with shirt extra oh! e enhanced to see nipple like crazy. Oh! And I was like 22, and I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> like I was uh -oh. not not uh -oh. ready for jiggle. that. Um, I think one day I might like to go off grid and like live that Ooh. private private life. But for now, I, I I love it. I think I was meant for this life as well. Chance has a superiority complex. Whoa, oh that is God. so not, That's... sorry, not gonna speak for you, but incorrect. No, I, I like it. I like that I give off the vi I like that I give off the what? vibes. No, I don't like it. <laughs> um, I used to think that people who were quieter than me thought they were cooler than me. And I think I've a, tried to adopt that, not in that I'm cooler than you, just being quiet and just being calm and collected because there's a power and there's a stillness that uh, intimidates people. And that's very Coda coded um, <laughs> from D&D. &D. My character's like very like, he's like a high elf and he's just like, he's quiet, he's reserved, not superior, but just like d down to facts doesn't bullshit. Mm. Arasha only wants a famous partner. That is definitely not true. I, I, uh, I mean, <laughs> like, that just, that just feels, it just feels so odd to say it because I, I would never be like, oh, I'm famous and I need fame yeah. around me. Like, it's very hard to even say that right now because it doesn't feel like uh, fame is something that is even achieved for me at this point. Mm. So it's very hard to be like, that's all I want. For me, I'm not looking out for <laughs> for clout. Chance reads Jimmy Neutron fan fictions. What the Correct. F no, I'm just Shut kidding. <laughs> Correct. I'm just kidding, but I, I don't read Jimmy Neutron fan fictions. I don't read any fan fictions, but I will say, that my for you page on Instagram, like my <gasps> Discover page. Oh no 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 no! Let me speak. Let me speak. Let her speak. Let her speak. It's a lot of like fan art type of things, or like combination type of things. And fan cams. So like, no 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 no. <laughs> so like, what if Pokemon were uh, suits of armor? And then it's like I was scrolling thing. It's like Pikachu has a suit of armor. Bulbasaur has a suit of armor. And so you can't help but scroll. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna look at all of them. I'm gonna send them to people. Like, which one are you picking? Which one do you like? <laughs> In the comments. Oh yeah, I'm 100. percent Chance is a lightweight. False. False. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. <laughs> Oh. Yes, you did. You did. It's I just okay. take pride. I have trained yeah. my liver well. Nice. And so it deserves a little praise because sure. it can go. Okay. <laughs> it can go and it can mix. Mm. Whoa. That must yeah. be expensive for you, though, King. Ah, uh, you are so incredibly correct, but not if you're not buying your own drinks. Mm. Oh. There you go. There you go. What is it about being a Smosh cast member that brings you the most joy? Oh, mm. so I love that. <laughs> oh. Honestly, just being, having a place to be silly, stupid, and safe. Oh, That's it. Silly. That's that all. says a lot. Yep. 
I'd say that my favorite thing about this job, and it's like been my rock of this whole thing, is like comedy is like, it's the cure. It truly feels like we're creating magic sometimes. Like for example, we see each other, we want to make each other laugh, and like, it's just, it feels like we're all just like around a campfire, and like, this beacon is just comedy and feeling good inside, and like, I take it so seriously, this, this job, because two out of three times when I meet people at a meet and greet, like, they say, I, I, you got me through a tough time, or like, you helped me forget about all the stuff that's going on, and like, I love that, that's my fuel, and I wanna be that for people, because it's like, sometimes there's nowhere to go. The first thing that came to mind for me was, uh, my favorite video that we've done so far, which was the eat it or eat it Indian food. Going back and, and collecting the reception from it, like, was just such an emotional thing for me. Like, I just got so many responses from people just being, like, relating to, to the stuff that I was saying. Something that felt so, like, specific to my experience talking about, you know, my experiences with like th the ingredients or these dishes and, and my mom and stuff like that, it felt like, oh, I'm sharing with all of these people who don't know that. But then it was sharing with all of these people who do know that and mm. people who were like, dude, like my mom did the same thing or like, oh my God, like I hated this ingredient or my brother and I would do this. And, and so maybe the word is, is the relatability and that is when I feel the most grateful. Mm -hmm. That's just like the representation of, of who I am on screen when it is valued and rewarded and then I see it reflected back to me from a fan is so precious mm. and just so like, it, it, it just kind of grounds you, you know? Because then it's not a, a wide array of people that you are just speaking nothingness into. It's people who are actually holding on to your words and then taking the time out to search for you and then being like, hey, guess what? Like, me too. Mm -hmm. And that is so special. 